and I welcome you back to the Debritic channel. Today we are talking about Lake Oroville strictly. We will be doing a water history lesson on Lake Oroville. Some of the, you may be intrigued by this. I sure was. With my computer going down, I had to do a lot of digging and I found most of the water levels for the history except for Lake Oroville. So, disclosure, the lake only goes back to about 1985. There's nothing beyond that that I could find and that is all I have. Have. Now that's not the case for Lake Shasta, Lake Trinity, or Lake Folsom. I have all those water histories all the way back to the beginning and we will be doing each and every one of these lakes coming up within the next several weeks. I have been very busy rebooting my computer and getting it back to normal and I'm not quite there yet but I thought it was overdue for me to make a video. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. This is late. 9 o'clock my time. 7 o'clock California time. And we're getting right here. Here we are at Lake Oroville's water history and discover the dramatic water history of Lake Oroville today. And we are going right on out here and you can see that River Reborn, the five greatest inflows of Lake Oroville's unveiled and here we go number five 1231 2005 you had 127,863 CFS inflows of Lake Oroville and, and for those of you who may be wondering how many Olympic sized swimming pools that could be every second that's approximately 86.90 Olympic sized swimming pool you want to break that down a little bit further that's 1.45 swimming pools per second that's the big ones Olympic sized swimming pools just insane and we continue to roll on here February 9th 2017 everybody can remember that and the inflows believe it or not this is the only inflows that come in on 2017 as being the highest at 155,498 CFS per second that's incredible these were the highest reached during that period during that time and these are not outflows these are what's coming into the lake not what they're releasing and of course those will be different going out because of the dam being messed up and for reference, for those of you who may be wondering how many Olympic swimming pools that may be, well, that's approximately 105.68 Olympic-sized swimming pools every minute and about 1.76 swimming pools per second. So not quite two, but definitely over one. And we continue to roll out to number three. And number three happened on December 31st, 1996. It was a New Year's Eve storm. For those of you who may recall, you had an inflow of 169,930 CFS. And that's just insane. That is a lot of Olympic swimming pools as well. That can fill approximately 115.49 Olympic swimming pools every minute. That's insane. 1.92 per second. That's a lot of water, folks, coming in. We go out to number two next. Your number two is January 2nd, 1997, 182.332 CFS cubic feet per second, that is. And for those of you who are wondering how many Olympic size swimming pools that is, that's 123.91 over 2 per second is what you're cooking now. And we continue to roll out to your number one inflows are revealed finally. Your number one unveiled is the same storm. January 1st, 1997, coming out of 1996. So you had this one here, and then you had this here was 274,267 cubic feet per second was the highest inflows into the Lake Oroville since recorded history about 1985. Who knows beyond that? I'm not quite sure, but that's what we got going on there. And for those who are just referencing, this will be the last reference for any Olympic set a swimming pool that is approximately 186.39 Olympic swimming pools per minute 3.11 almost double what this is right here so that's what you got going on and we continue to roll on here we are now going over to unleashing the turret Lake Oroville's record-breaking outflows and this is a little bit different than your inflows you would have thought they would be similar but this is not the case Coming in at number five, your outflows at Lake Oroville. Of course, during the emergency of February 13th, 2017, they had 999 
thousand CFS coming out of the dam. Now the dam was broke. They probably would have released a heck of a lot more had it not been broke. But due to the circumstances, they could only release so much because they knew that dam was in trouble. If they would have ramped it up to the two hundred thousand that they had coming in at one point in time, if they would have released a lot more than that, even if they would have released it up to one hundred fifty thousand CFS, they would have been in a world of trouble. So they were trying to protect the spillway so it didn't create more problems they would have had a heck of a lot more outflows had they not monitored that carefully and luckily things worked out because that could have been a real disaster and we go out to number four next and that goes back to the 1997 storm january 3rd 1997 108,967 cubic feet per second and then we go out to number three the same 1997 storm 110,104 cfs so you had all that rain coming in well they had to release that and they release it out slower than what it's coming in clearly and this just shows true to the vest and then we go to number two same storm 1997 125,606 cfs and then we go to your number one same storm these all came in one two three and four this happened to come in on the second and there hasn't been any higher outflows since 129,256 cfs that is what you got going on next and now we're going to the dipping points Dipping points, Lake Orville's five historic lows, and these are all recent. As you all may remember, back in 2021, coming in at number five, September 29, 2021, the water level at Lake Oroville was 628.72 feet MSL, and I remember covering this. This was a very, very low time in the history of Lake Oroville, and it was the lowest ever recorded since recorded history since about 1985. The lake is much older than that, so it's really hard to say if it was any lower in the 70s. It's possible, but I don't ever remember hearing about the Hyatt Power Plant closing, so these are all within the 2021, just different dates. So here we go, number four. September 21st, 2021. The water level was 628.72 MSL. And then number three was September 20th, 2020, 628.70 feet MSL. We go to number two, and that was October 1st, 2021, 628.64 feet MSL. And number one was the day before, September 30th, 2021, 628.63 feet msl and now we go to cresting the summits lake oroville's peak water elevation unrevealed and here we go with the top five highest water levels in the history of lake oroville and the first number five comes in starting this year that level was june 20th 2023 899.88 feet msl and that was earlier this year about five months ago now and then we go to number four that happened on june 26 2011 the water level was 900 even then we go to june 24th 2011 the water level was 900.01 feet and then we go to your number two and that was june 25th 2011 so the day before in between it was actually got up to 900.10 feet lake orville's highest water level was on february 11th and of course anybody living in the area knows this all too well that was during the spillways disaster and the water level just so happened to be the highest water level was on february 11 2017 at 902.57 feet msl thank you guys for stopping by i'm gonna do lake shasta in a couple days and i'm gonna do lake Folsom as well so hopefully everybody's having a great thanksgiving a kind of short but interesting history lesson there for everybody so now you all have that on record i went back and looked thoroughly through all these i hope everybody's having a great thanksgiving and we will see you soon on the next one god bless